Hey, welcome to my channel. My name is Mark. I upload lectures and tutorial videos here on YouTube about anything related to the civil engineering curriculum. So if you are a civil engineering student or if you want to take a Bachelor of Science in Civil Engineering in the near future, this is the right channel for you. So if you are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell button below so that you won't miss any updates or any new uploads from my channel. So, for today's video, we'll talk about one of the practical applications of differential calculus. We'll be talking about time rates. So in this episode, I will walk you through three simple easy steps in solving problems related to time rates. So in these types of problem, you'll often be asked how fast or how slow a certain variable is changing through time in response to how fast or how slow the changes on another variable is taking place. So what do I mean by this? Let's take this for example. Suppose we have a ladder, and this ladder is resting on a wall like this. And say, for example, if we denote the point of contact between the ladder and the wall as point B, and the point of contact between the ladder and the floor as point A, okay, we'll have this figure. And uh, just by looking at this figure, logic will tell you that when point A moves to the left, point B will move downward, like this. Or conversely, when point B moves downward, point A will move to the left. So you see, just by looking at the figure, we will know that somehow points A and B are, they are interrelated to each other. There is some sort of relationship between the two. Now, if we could just define the relationship of points A and B, then we could surely predict the movement of one variable, say for example, point B, we can predict the movement of point B just by looking at the movement of point A. Now, as engineers, we often write this relationship in equation form. And so the first step in solving these types of problem is actually finding the equation that defines the relationship between variables. Now, in finding the equations, there are no rules, but it involves the variable being asked in the problem. So, in this step, this is where your knowledge in your lower mathematics comes in. So, your knowledge in geometry, trigonometry, um, analytic geometry, etc., etc. Okay, so to demonstrate this step, let us have this problem. A ladder, 25 feet long, leans against a vertical wall. If the top slides downward at a rate of 2 feet per second, find how fast the lower end is moving when it is 15 feet from the wall. So based on the problem, the ladder, or the length of the ladder is 25 feet long. So however the ladder moves, the length of the ladder will not change. So if we say in the L, the length of the ladder is constant here. So what are the variables here? Okay, so the variables here are actually the length of y, this length here, because as, as it mentioned in the problem, it says there that the top down, so that is point B, the top slides downward at a rate of 2 feet per second. So it follows that this y here, this, uh, this distance here is changing through time. And the rate of that change with respect to time is 2 feet per second. So conversely, as I have said earlier, when this B, when point B moves, of course, point A will also move. So that also follows that the distance X is also variable. And in fact, what is being asked in the problem is actually the rate of change of X with respect to time. So again, so to solve this problem, the first step is always to find the equation that relates whatever is the whatever is the required by the problem. So in this problem, take note that we are required to solve for the rate of change of x with respect to time. So the two variables here are x and y. So we have to find the equation that relates x and y here. Now, looking at this figure, you see that um, this forms a right triangle right here. Since this is a right triangle, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. And the Pythagorean theorem states that um, the square of the hypotenuse, that's the longest side, is equal to the sum of the square of each leg. So this one right here is the hypotenuse though. 
and this one and this one are the legs of the right triangle. So the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the square of the legs. So it follows that um, in formula, we can write it as c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared. So c squared is your le um, hypotenuse and your a and b are the legs of the triangle, of the right triangle. So using this formula, we can arrive at an equation that relates x and y. So we'll have this equation. L squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. Now take note that L here is the length of the ladder and this is constant. And the variables here are x and y. Yeah, so we have an equation that relates x and y. Actually, we can make several equations out of this figure. We can also use trigonometric function and we can use the um, tangent. Tangent theta is equal to y over x. So you see, you also re in this equation, you also relate x and y. The only problem on this equation is that you have introduced another variable here, which was not even mentioned in the problem. You have here another variable, and that variable is theta. Now, this brings me to my next point, and this is very important, and I want to reiterate this one. In finding for the equation, the goal is always to minimize the number of unknowns. Okay, so in this equation, in this equation, you have two unknowns. You have x and y. You have two variables. You have x and y. Now, in this equation, naman, you have theta, that's a variable. You have y and you have x. So there are three variables in this in this equation. As I have said, um, in finding for the equation, your your goal should be to minimize the number of unknowns. So based on this uh in this I know equations, so it's either this equation or this equation, of course we'll go for this equation because it has um a lower number of unknowns, a lower number of variables and also you have to remember that in your equation what is being asked should be included in that equation so for example since um x x man uh, the rate of change of x man so x ang hinahanap ng problem so your x it should be included in your equation because if it is not then you cannot solve the problem okay so we'll stop at this one because step number one is only to find for the equation and we have already find the equation and that is l squared is equal to x squared plus y squared and step number two naman that is to differentiate with respect to time so in this step this is actually where the actual differentiation happens okay so you'll take the the equation in step number one and we will differentiate it with respect to time like this one We'll take the whole equation and differentiate it with respect to time. Differentiating both sides of the equation, we'll have this equation. We have 0, 0 because your L squared here is constant and the differential of constant is 0. That's why you have 0 here. And that is equal to 2x dx over dt plus 2y dy over dt. And we'll stop there because again, Step number two is your task is only to differentiate with respect to time. And this equation is, uh, we already done differentiating the equation with respect to time. So we'll use that as the answer for step number two. Which brings me to step number three, and that is to answer what is asked in the problem. Now, for me, this is very important because um, even though you get step number one and step number two right, but if you fail to recognize what is asked in the problem, then you will also arrive at the wrong answer. So you have to focus on what is being asked on the problem. Okay, let's take a look at the problems one more time. Sabi dito, um, we have to find how fast the lower end is moving. So we are finding for the rate of change of x, this one, the rate of change of x with respect to time. So we are actually finding for dx over dt. So if we take the equation step number two, we're actually trying to solve for this one right here, dx over dt. So we will write the equation, we'll manipulate the equation, we'll write it 
Uh, so the dx over dt is on the left side of the equation. So we'll have this um, equation right here. So basically, I just rewrite, I mean, transpose this term here to the left side of the equation. That's why we have here negative 2x dx over dt. And that is equal to 2y, 2y dy over dt. And um, dividing both sides of the equation by negative 2, we'll have this equation. And uh, further simplifying by canceling out 2, then we'll have this equation. dx over dt is equal to y over negative x multiplied by dy over dt. So this is our equation in solving for dx over dt. This means that in order for you to solve dx over dt, and that is the, the rate of change of x with respect to time, that is what is being asked in the problem. In order to solve this one, you need the value of y, you need the value of x, and of course, you need the value of dy over dt. This is the rate of change of y with respect to t. Okay. Now, to solve this one, of course, you, you will go to the problem again, to whatever is the given in the problem. Now, based on the problem, these are given, x is given, and that is 15 feet. And the rate of change of y with respect to t is also given, and that is 2 feet per second. However, we have a problem because y is not given. Okay, so... In order to solve for dx over dt, you need first to solve for the value of y. Isaan naman natin hanapin yung y. We'll go to step number 1. We'll use the equation in step number 1. Now, we already know the value of l squared and that is 25. You also have the value of x which is equal to 15. And therefore, we can solve for the value of y. So, solving for the equation, we'll arrive at the value of y. We'll get the value of y equal to 20. And we'll substitute this 20 to our equation right here. Now, substituting all the values and carrying out the operation, we'll get dx over dt, dx over dt equal to 8 over 3 feet per second. And this is our final answer for step number 3. Okay, so these are the steps in solving these types of problem, time rates. These are the steps in solving time rates. So, I mean, in step number one, you have to find for the equation. Take note in finding for the equation, um, what is being asked should always be included in that equation. That's what we need to remember. In step number two, that is simply differentiating the equation with respect to time. And in step number three, you have to answer what is asked in the problem. So in order to do that, of course, you have to recognize what is being asked in the problem. So that is um, in step number three. So these are the three simple easy steps in solving time rates related problem. So step number one, find the equation. Step number two, differentiate with respect to time. And step number three, answer what is asked in the problem. On the next video, will solve this sample problem.